Welcome to Prayer and Bible Band, Lesson 3, for the third week of June 2022. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is the importance of forgiveness. Today's background reading is coming out of Mark chapter 11, verse 25, Luke chapter 17, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 to 32. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. The devotional reading is coming out of Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. The central verse, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. The key terms for today's lesson. Offends, to transgress the moral or divine law, to cause difficulty, discomfort, or injury. Bondage, the tenure or service of a villain, a serf, or an enslaved person. A state of being bound, usually by compulsion, servitude, or subjugation to a controlling person or force. Obligation, something such as a formal contract, a promise, or the demands of conscience or custom that obligates one to a course of action, something a person feels they must do, a duty. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Luke chapter 17, verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 to 32. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. 
1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. The introduction says, Many times, believers find forgiveness hard, but it is necessary. Believers will find that they receive the healing and transformational power when they let things go and walk in the flow of forgiveness. So the believer must choose to forgive the person who trespassed against him if he wants the forgiveness of God. Many believers go from day to day heavily nursing wounds from things that people have said or done to them. They find themselves struggling to make it through the day because of the weight of the baggage of unforgiveness. Sometimes they want to forgive, but they are unwilling to let things go or don't know how to let them go. Often, the need for revenge or the fact that they feel someone needs to pay for hurting them keeps them bound to unforgiveness. If they want to heal and be free of that burden, they must forgive and walk away from the burden of their past to begin living the abundant life that God promised to give them. The discussion says, It is the will of God that all His children live happy, fulfilled lives, not burdened with bitterness, guilt, hurt and shame, but unforgiveness leaves a person with all these negative powers working in his life. God's redemptive work offers the believer forgiveness for every sin and the shame. He offers forgiveness for sin and gives the healing power the believer receives when he forgives others and himself. He says to the believer, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is a balm that heals the sin-sick soul of a man. It deals with the thoughts and with the mind of a man. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And that's Psalm 119 verse 9. When a person chooses to forgive another person, he chooses a life-giving experience for himself. This act will reconcile the person and give the believer a reconciling experience with his Savior. It draws him close to Jesus and puts the believer closer to his master. It assures the believer that he is a follower of Jesus Christ and he becomes a candidate to become a friend of Jesus. It deals with the ways of a man. God desires that every believer mature to a place in him where he can be free of the pain of hurts, disappointments, and other painful things. But it all hinges on the life of unforgiveness. He wants his children to live a lifestyle of forgiveness, living where these things will not disturb their sense of peace. For whoever God sets free must be free from the cares of this life. Forgiving others gives the believer a right attitude about himself and others. Once he forgives one person, it becomes easier to forgive others and allows the believer the privilege of receiving grace for his journey. Forgiveness does not make you forget the memory, but the memory is like a scar from a wound. It will always be there, but it doesn't hurt anymore. You will sometimes remember incidents, but the incidents won't hurt anymore. Forgiveness is not just a request for believers, but it is a requirement if the believer wants to be forgiven and set free. He must forgive others, no matter how much he has been hurt. Sometimes believers will not forgive others because they feel that the offenders owe them an apology. But there are times when the offender will not apologize. But this does not free the believer from giving forgiveness. He is obligated to forgive if he never receives an apology. When he does what is right, God will do what needs to be done. Giving forgiveness to others helps the believer grow spiritually emotionally, and physically, because giving forgiveness releases the believer from the power of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness releases negative powers into a believer's life. It allows anger, bitterness, frustrations, and many other opposing forces to be at work in their lives that will be very destructive. Unforgiveness releases harmful and toxic forces that will help destroy the believer's physical life. It also has control over the life of the offended person, for it holds him in bondage. The conclusion says, the word of the Lord encourages believers to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. It encourages believers to be positive in their actions toward those who offend. The word tells the believer that it would be better for the offender to be in the middle of an ocean with a gigantic heavy stone around his neck than to offend one of God's least ones. And that's Luke chapter 17 verse 2. Jesus tells the story of the man who owed an outstanding debt to his master. He went to the master and explained that he couldn't pay the debt back and asked him to please forgive him. The master had mercy on him and forgave him. He canceled the debt and the man no longer had to pay the debt. This same man whose debt had been forgiven was owed a small sum compared to the debt he owed to his master. He went to the man and asked him to pay him what was owed. The man who owed him told him that he didn't have it. 
The man who had been forgiven of his large debt grabbed the man very roughly and had him thrown in prison for the little debt that he owed. Jesus rebuked the man and said that he was unfair because his master had forgiven and he should have forgiven the man who owed him. The, the disciples came to Jesus asking him how many times he must forgive a brother who offends at least seven times. Jesus said that he must forgive him at least 70 times seven. The questions for today's lesson. Question one, why is it necessary to forgive someone who offends you? Question two, how many times in a day should a believer forgive someone who offends him? Question three, what are the benefits of forgiveness? Question four, what happens when there is unforgiveness in a person's life? The essential thought, forgive and be free, or don't forgive and be in bondage. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.